one thing that we really can help our honeybees stay healthy is access to good forage. And so when our bees are facing these issues like diseases and pesticides, having access to good nutrition throughout the season can help them deal with those challenges a lot better. As we go back and, and look at the uh, supplemental forage, uh, just to talk about that for a minute. When we started about 10 years ago, we, we've got a mix of, uh, of wildflowers and, and grasses there. Uh, and that was through our, our local conservation district is how we got set up. Uh, USDA uh, has a program uh, to help fund that, uh, at least on a cost sharing basis to get them established. Uh, and you don't do any of these projects for the money. You know, you, you do it for the right reason and, and try to provide some habitat uh, for bees. Uh, like I said, this, this one here, we, we are in the process of reworking now. It seemed as time went on, the grasses got extremely big and uh, you couldn't see many of the flowers. Uh, we, we like to see the flowers and stuff and not that they weren't there, but that's why we're gonna redo it here. Uh, it's on the south side of the orchard. It drops down towards the swamp. Certainly isn't a, a good location to plant any trees. It's, it's very steep there uh, and, and no air drainage that, that we need uh, for, for apples. But it, it's a perfect uh, habitat uh, you know, for, for wildflowers. And it does, uh, it's, it's a long, narrow section here. Uh, goes across the, uh, the whole uh, length of the orchard here, uh, which is, is about a half a mile here. So, so ideally we want to have uh, flowers in bloom throughout the season when bees are flying and foraging. So early in the spring, um, throughout the spring and in the summer, sometimes here in Michigan, we can have a little bit of a dearth or um, less nectar available in parts of the summer. So finding plants that are in bloom during those times can be really helpful. And then through the fall as well, because the bees need to bring in some of that late season nectar and store it as honey for their winter food supply. Um, so here in Michigan, goldenrod is one really important fall nectar source for us. There's a lot of different plant lists out there. Um, ideally, people should look for plant lists in their area. Uh, in Michigan, we have a website, it's pollinators.msu.edu, it's through Michigan State University, and we have lots of different plant lists on there. Uh, but generally, if you look for plant lists that are for your area or your state, um, you should be able to find lots of different options of plants to plant. So we don't always know exactly the amount of habitat that's needed for bees. It's going to depend on which bees are in your area, how many bees, the species, um, and then the overall landscape. Uh, generally, more habitat is better. So any opportunity you have to increase the amount of pollinator habitat on your land is great. Um, our bees forage on, need lots of flowers in order to make honey. Um, so the one fact that's thrown around often is that bees will need about two million blossoms to make one pound of honey. So um, it's going to vary a little bit depending on the plant and other issues. Two million blossoms is a lot, but every little bit of pollinator habitat helps. Um, honey bees will fly an average of about two miles from their hives, um, sometimes more if they need to. And so in general, our bees are f covering a huge amount of acres. We don't need people to provide all of the nutrition in one spot in the bee yard, but uh, anything you can do to plant and increase and contribute to the, the forage that the bees need can be really valuable. Uh, we talked to some growers who have areas of their farm that maybe aren't the best for production, uh, maybe marginal areas, maybe on the sides of the field, um, or areas where it gets you know, too wet or difficult to plant. And so any of these areas where it's not ideal for the crop, that's where we would encourage the grower to consider incorporating some pollinator habitat. Uh, so it's also great if growers can consider other parts of their farm where there's not crops. So for example, behind barns or sheds or other areas that aren't in production, if you can plant pollinator habitat, that can be really beneficial. It's little here, little there, but it does, it does add up. Um, you know, you'll see little patches where it's just a small area, but you can walk into it and it can be absolutely humming with, with bees and other, if you just kind of stand still, all sorts of insect life. Um, so the, these, they, they do find those areas, they do utilize them, and I think they can be an important contributor 